Hello, and welcome to I Choose You, the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. <laughs> My name is Jeremy Zielik, and I'm the host and <laughs> group. Joining me this week is... Oh my god, this is the best, like, <laughs> drink noise uh, <laughs> moment that we've had so far. Uh, I'm Ben Montoya, your friend on this show. Ian Davis, the chowder of the show. Oh, fuck. And uh, with, with a hell of a day, Evan Aubrey, I'm drinking pineapple ma- uh, jalapeno micro- margarita from a glass bottle. <laughs> nice. Did you get that on a, on a margarita tower? Uh, no, I got it at uh, Safeway. <laughs> okay. On the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit, I need a margarita. Gotta bang over to Safeway. Though maybe Safeways in California are better than what I'm familiar with. Oh yeah. yeah. And after the day I've had, let me tell you. Okay, Evan. Tell, tell us, us about, about the day you've had. You prom- well, I was buying fucking groceries. You're like, you won't believe what's going on. So you, Jeremy, you won't believe what's going on. Let okay. me tell you about how I ended up with a couch stuck in my hallway. Oh no, oh. it's like friends over here. So, it's like friends <laughs> over here. so mon- months ago, Tori and I went to one uh, crate and barrel and uh, we mm. went for some dishes. And then we, on the way out, saw this sofa and we're like, we should just sit on that. Like, we have a good sofa, but we should just sit on it, <laughs> see if we like it. Just like rest our little little tuchuses for a little mm. bit. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And lo and behold, it was the be- most beautiful goddamn sofa I've ever sat on in my entire life. <laughs> Best and set you've ever screamed had. Screamed in pleasure as they each cheek touched the cushion. <laughs> yeah, the and elements. and and from that night on, it was very much like Wayne's World. Like, oh yes, it will be mine. Uh, <laughs> so I I sat out on set out on a quest to acquire said couch, but. Uh, not new because new it was expensive and mm-hmm. I do not want to spend money on a couch that yeah, much. Yeah, reasonable. Mm-hmm. So I scoured Craigslist and I found oh, a couch okay. that I was... I can see slightly where this story might be going. <laughs> so I found a couch that was in uh, uh, Napa. So that was an hour away from me. And mm-hmm. to transport said couch, I had to rent a U-Haul van. Nice. So mm. I go to the U-Haul that I had a uh, rent set up for online, rented it, go to the thing, <laughs> The place is closed, but I still have the reservation, and the reservation's confirmed. So, like, what do I do? I, I cancel that one. I, like, scramble to the next closest U-Haul that closes in 10 minutes. And no. so I get I get that van. The guy's like, fuck it. I'm about to leave, but, like, here's a fucking van. Like, here you go. Um, so, and you're like, I have to drive an hour and back. Yeah, well, luckily, it's like the you, like, throw the keys in the drop box when you get back kind of thing. So, oh, like, it wasn't okay. much of a burden on him. So, okay, acquire said van. Drive to the fucking... Um, uh, side note, I had to take care of a cat for, like, two seconds. So, we do go do that. <laughs> okay. And then we drive an hour out to Napa, get this couch. It's It weighs, like... 50 pounds or like 100 pounds it's it's a massive couch oh, and like man. i mean 100 pounds for a couch isn't bad it, i mean it was pretty okay maybe it might be more because it was pretty okay. chonky and it's a it's it's one absolute unit okay uh okay. like you, no coming apart like the cushions come off but that's about it so we get it out of this person's house in napa drive back we unloaded it and everything and first thing so i live on the top of a three-story building uh, walk with, on, with only stairs to get to, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. this this staircase is pretty pretty tight. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> Tori and I are like, you know what, we we could do this. Uh, turns out we couldn't do it, and a neighbor like came out of their place and like helped us like get it up the stairs. So we got it up the stairs, get it into our apartment. Doesn't fucking like maneuver into the living room, so it is now currently stuck in the hallway. Oh, so we it's don't like. In the hallway of your building? Of my apartment. So it's not in any not not in any egresses or anything, but <laughs> So, I, so uh, you're so you're you you have a couch in your hall. Like if you opened your door and you looked out, you'd it's see just a couch. couch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's all you couch have to now. like you have to like hop over it to like get into the the rest of the apartment. Hmm. And, and you uh, have to like take yeah. a sharp item to this couch to get it out. I know. Like so, it's not officially stuck. It's just like stuck there until we either tomorrow <laughs> like figure out and like some magical like brain unlocking way to like make it fit in the living room before we get rid of it. <laughs> Ian. Have you considered buttering it? So, yeah, make it nice and smooth. 
that was that was one thing that ran through my mind like can we just lube it up somehow or like couch lube how do we how do we take this thing apart there are services that will professionally disassemble sofas but it was in new york city and i was not about to fly somebody out to disassemble this couch <laughs> And you call it, and, and it's like New York City couch dissembling service. I want to help you. <laughs> On top of all that, we had taken apart our previous couch because we're like, we lined up an, a, a buyer for the new thing, right? Mm. So they get here as our couch oh. is fucking stuck in the hallway. We, oh, we no. We sell our old couch. So now we just fucking have to sit on the floor until we figure out what's going on. You should, you should have sold I, them the new couch. I was, Ooh. It would not fit in their CRV, let me tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, so that was the day wow. I've had, and hence why I'm like downing this pineapple jalapeno marg. Yeah. Well, That's tough to go from one couch in a spot that works to two couches that uh, are inconvenient to one couch in an inconvenient location and no no couch in front of your TV. Nice. Yeah, so it's it's been a whole day, and I appreciate y'all for sticking with me. I think that's why, if, if like there is like a moral of this story, it should be fucking illegal for them to put products at the checkout line to try and, and like, you know, <laughs> they got the candies and stuff, there's the sofa... <laughs> That's just like illegal marketing, dude. I I agree. Yeah, <laughs> same thing with I like do... when you go to an REI and you're checking out and you're like, oh, I could use this water bottle or sunglasses or like mm. lip balm or what? No, no, get that shit out of here. <laughs> so I the... I do want to offer maybe a solution, mm. not a solution, a temporary solution. You know, because I imagine at some point, like you're saying, you're gonna get the the couch in the proper location that you want it. But for now. Have you considered the possibility of doing like you know giant apartment wide uh, blanket fort? Mm. Oh shit! That's because a, a couch in the middle of the hallway that you have to kind of like scramble over, that could be pretty fun. That would be pretty fun. That's a a great remedy, and like even just provide a little comedic relief to this whole thing. Because like <laughs> if if I was not the one moving this couch, I would be fucking laughing my ass off at like how <laughs> terrible this situation was. But just given, like, the buckets of sweat that came out of me today and, like, how <laughs> sore and tired I am, like, I, I I have no sympathy for myself. Yeah, and the work week's just about to start. Like, I feel like it's going to be one of those things where it's going to stick around maybe in that hallway for at least a day or so. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if, if you were me, I I would it probably would be there for, like, a month or so before I actually figured out what I was going to do with it. Okay, um, yeah. It, it may, yeah, Monday morning rolls around tomorrow, and we'll, I'll give it a good old college try and then probably give up in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> so I just need to, like, clarify. Did you find, like, the exact couch you sat on just oh, used? At, yeah, so, well, okay. Mm. It was, except I think the one that we ended up getting was the deep couch which is maybe attributes to why it doesn't fucking fit in the door because it's jumbo size yeah i got the deep dish couch that like doesn't it's like five inches wider than it should have been which Mm. i think is what the issue was (laughs) bastards damn so we're doing it i'm here we made it except my story broke jeremy's internet so we're just hanging out (laughs) how's your marg it's pretty good, actually. I This is tasty. It might absolutely roast me, and I probably shouldn't drink the entire thing. Um, but <laughs> it looks like you're drinking, like, a mana potion or it something. It really <laughs> is. Like, all of their, all of their like, different cocktails are very nuclear, like, colored. Hmm. <laughs> I love it. Makes and it made such a satisfying noise. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Evan, you should... Um... Ben needs someone to do uh, sound effects for his podcast. Mm. I think you're, the, you're the guy. I'm the Foley artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could get that going for there sure. Go. Good bottle. I, I actually I remember that for, you know, if, for the next time I need a bottle noise. The, yeah. Come, come to um, me. Safeway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. On, on like the rocks. OT, OTR TM. All right. Well, and there's, uh, if I remember right, Ben, there's a character on your show who's like, Mommy needs her wine. Oh. <laughs> I can't stop having wine. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Every time that uh, this character sits in front of a movie, um, it's hard to even enjoy a movie without a big, a big drink of wine and popcorn. Obviously. And popcorn. <laughs> uh, so good. Oh man. I, if, if, if you're listening to this specifically, this segment right here, which might get cut, I have no idea. Um, cut for time. And you haven't watched um, all of I Think You Should Leave, pause this podcast, go watch all of that, and then resume this podcast. And, and then because... re-listen to episodes in the past where we've Yeah, where we joke it about it. Because if you don't know that, then it's a very uh, not making sense reference. And that's okay, you know? I think Jeremy would approve of a reference that didn't make it. If Jeremy, if Jeremy were here right now, he was still <laughs> what would Jeremy do? Jeremy would make a reference that no one else would get. So that's true. Uh, <laughs> what if? Okay, new merch idea. Uh, wrist like wristbands uh, and bumper stickers that say Y W J D, but it's Jeremy. What would? <laughs> Ooh, what, would what would Jesus? Do? What would Jeremy do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you know, um, you know. <laughs> oh, and he's back. <laughs> Speak of him and he shall appear. Right, you know what's really annoying about this is that it appears that Skype crashed because it wanted to force update itself right now. Oh. Right. Oh. But now you're up to date. Secure. Yeah, because it's complete, the setup is completely different than it was when I started. <laughs> oh, no. Well, Jeremy, we were, we were just discussing um, uh, new bumper stickers that say, like, what, what would Jeremy do? But it's, yeah. w, it's still W Y J D, so like yeah, you know. So if you know, yeah. you know. He, yeah, if you, you do <laughs> preach the good word, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, just the good word of cooking and eating Pokemon. <laughs> hey, there that's it is. right. Are we, are we, we cutting it, this out? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we definitely shouldn't. It's all okay, <laughs> cooking and eating Pokemon. That's what this show is about. Uh, sorry about your couch, Evan. I missed the end of that story. I hope oh, you're you gotta to go listen out. to this episode afterwards. It's oh cool. shit! There's something I missed. Uh, anyway, um, this week, uh, each week on I Choose You, we uh, talk about cooking and eating a different Pokemon, uh, and then we talk amongst ourselves about who has the best recipe, most delicious, most mind blowing, good. I don't know all that garbage, and then we vote and decide who has the best. Uh, this week, uh, we're talking about cooking and eating spupa, and I hope you guys are ready with all your great uh, pupa slash spew puns. Uh, yeah, just ready week. to spew. I yes. actually <laughs> specifically did not pursue puns for this recipe because oh. the pun that was baked into this episode um, <laughs> disgusted me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Ben. If you hear my recipe, uh, you might think otherwise. Okay. No. Do you, uh, usually, who wins last week won, but I don't remember who won last week because we recorded like two weeks ago. Uh, does anyone it remember? I think was it a poll? I won. Okay, Ben, you won. Okay, let's just say Ben won. So we can, all right, Ben. Can <laughs> I just that's what I think. On your win, we can double check in a sec. But um, yeah, so like I said, um, disgusted by this pun, um, and made me want to spew when I hear it and i and i and read it so um and i wanted to make something kind of tasty that is uh spupa inspired but um doesn't make you name it you know like acknowledge its uh its title it who should not be named yes. exactly <clears throat> is this your least and, favorite uh, pokemon name um i don't know maybe well, I guess uh, least favorite in the sense that it gives me a really visceral reaction. It's actually like a not bad name in the way that it's named. Like I, I always feel like Seal Seal is a is a worse name. That's a bad name because it just it just sucks. <laughs> it's just it's the, fucking garbage, and I hate it. <laughs> this is a bad name, as in it. I, it's a joke that shouldn't have been written. Mm -hmm. um, but, Much like this show, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you know, I, I have to cut it some slack. It's a it's a cruel prank pulled by God on humanity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and you know what else is a, a cruel prank um, on humanity that God inflicts is uh, invasive species. Oh, <laughs> true. So wow. we've talked a lot in the past about you know like eating bugs, right? So yeah, and there's the actually been a, a 
There's yeah. been a really big um, update, not in terms of eating bugs, but in terms of invasive species in and bugs in um, the eastern part of uh, America right now. Have you heard of this thing, the lantern fly? I have. You're supposed to kill them as soon as you see them. I saw a thing on Instagram that the New York Times was like lantern flies, and people were like, "Okay, New York Times." Yes. So I actually wanted to bring up this exact article because I this was a couple weeks ago, but I thought it was really funny. Um, <laughs> Basically, they're starting a lanternfly uh, like uh, public eradication like campaign. So it's mm-hmm. like, if you see something, squash something. Yes. You oh know, <laughs> certainly. Except hopefully not as racist. Um, oh. But um, yeah, basically there was this New York Times article um, that was about the like the two like both sides of the lanternfly quote unquote war as they call it. Oh. Um, war on flies. And uh, the people that they chose to, like, represent the side of people who didn't want to kill lantern lanternflies was just, like, comically stupid. Like, why did this article exist? It, it's, like, one of the people is Jody Smith, 33. Mr. Smith is vegan, yet not an absolutionist. He will exterminate cockroaches in his apartment in Union Square mm-hmm. and would support farmers uh, protecting their crops, he said. But the state endorsed bloodlust when it comes to lanternflies, and the sense that they are disposable seems like overkill to him. Quote, (laughs) if someone was like, oh, we have to kill all the Pomeranians, people might feel a lot differently about it. Yeah, I bet they would. (laughs) Um, But the other side of this that I thought was really interesting is actually there are a lot of people who are very enthusiastic about squishing these bugs. Um... Apparently in New York, um, in uh, Brooklyn, they host an annual squishathon, um, oh. where the, it just people go and squish as many bugs as they can. I guess um, there was a uh, lantern fly crushing pub crawl in New Jersey, mm. and uh, one Pennsylvania man developed an app that tracks users' kills called Squisher. Oh, <laughs> I like the yeah. idea of just like people just publicly intoxicated going around squishing bugs. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let's <laughs> Um, well, and the weirdest part was that I actually found this uh, other article about this, like, lanternfly TikToker who has gone viral because they, like, they, like, use this, like, an empty bottle and, like, vacuum them oh, up yes, off I've of the trees. This. And they tag it as a- ASMR, and people, like, love the sound of these, like, <laughs> bugs getting, like, is it, is it like sucked this? into the... <laughs> 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 Exactly. Is the ASMR part like when you like hear like a moth and it's caught in a window pane and it's like kind of bumping up against the glass? Like, well, <laughs> it's actually a really. You'll be surprised. Look this up later. It's it's there. It's a very smooth finish on the plastic water bottle suction. It's just like a really like soft and clean like thump. You know. Nice. So, so you know. Anyway, people just all get I'm off saying, on that. <clears throat> All I'm saying is that we're living in a new age of uh, squishing invasive species, and I imagine that in the Pokemon world that means eating them. Okay. Um, Are you saying I did Spupa look up is if an lantern... invasive species? Huh? You say Spupa is an invasive species? Yes. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, well. Okay. <laughs> Continue. It is based <laughs> off of a like hairy moth, so I think it's a little similar, you mm-hmm. know? Anyway, what I'm going to make with uh, Spupa is completely irrelevant to lanternflies. I'm going to oh, be okay. making a Funfetti cake. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. I see where that's, that's going. That is uh, Cake Boss style, you know, molded to look like the Spupa. Mm-hmm. Of course. <clears throat> so um, I did find a recipe that said, um, you know, uh, from scratch, Funfetti, in parentheses, sometimes also called Confetti cake. Um, which I thought was an interesting <laughs> turn of phrase. <laughs> Wait, say it again. <laughs> the yeah. article starts, um, a light and fluffy, made-from-scratch funfetti cake, in parentheses, sometimes also called confetti cake. So, like, Excellent. confetti, which is what? Yeah. Funfetti. Hmm. I, feel, I feel like... The, uh, the emphasis on the explain... regular word is a little bit off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to emphasize that it is, like, funfetti, but like a derivative. Mm. Confetti, I guess I should have said. Anywho, just, uh, hold on. We gotta talk about this for a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, isn't confetti inherently fun? Oh, uh, yes, no, it's not. Confetti is a delight, but it's also not edible, which funfetti is. Uh, I would, I would fetti. say that um, confetti was fun when I didn't have to clean it up. 
Mm, do you have true. to do that a lot now? Well, we did have, like, when we first moved to San Diego, we had, like, a surprise party for one of Asia's friends, mm. and people bought, like, confetti, like, you know, popper things, and I was like, cool, that sounds fine, and then they popped them, and then for <laughs> months, <laughs> Nigh upon a year afterward, we still find little confetti bits. Okay, well, I so, thought you were going to say for months that the funfetti kept coming out of their poppers. It just didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am actually glad you reminded me of this, because um, I actually distinctly remember when they invented funfetti, and it was edible confetti, <laughs> uh, they commissioned Kiss to write that song, Lick It Up. <laughs> <laughs> because no longer did you have to clean up your confetti off the floor. You could just go to fucking just Tongue Town. Zamboni. <laughs> Um, I have a question. Um, well, Ian, yeah. uh, you know, that would be useful. I went to a concert a couple of months ago, and they had confetti cannons. And mm. when you're at a concert, oh, no. sometimes you, like, sing along, or you're going, like, woo, or whatever. Oh. And when the, when the confetti went off, sometimes it would go into my mouth, and I'd be like, mm. gross. So, just right. Then you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> if that confetti was fun, though, then I would just be like, om nom nom, let me have more of it. Oh, they should have called it a yum fetty cake. Oh, shit. Uh, fuck whoever, Pillsbury? Who made fun fetty? They should have thought of this. Well, and so obviously, um, you know, when I was looking, I, I got the visual inspiration for the fun fetty, or confetti, if you will. Um, <laughs> and uh, But then when I tried to squish together spupa to, in with it, it became <laughs> spupetti, which sounds more like spaghetti. <laughs> and oh. I just... I, another reason why I wanted to stray away from wordplay on this episode uh-huh. and more into just like, here's a really good fucking confetti cake that looks like this bug. Mom's okay. fetti. Um, yeah. <laughs> Arms sweaty. <Steve. laughs> <Steve. laughs> okay, continue. Um, I'll be honest. I don't really bake much or at all. So um, <laughs> I'll just say, you know, I think you you can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Not even good. I can. Like, Look I can read can. to you this this recipe of a baker making Funfetti cake, or you can just know that Funfetti exists and mm. imagine that Spupa is that. Pick okay, it up so. at your local Safeway. Yeah, exactly. So in, ter- in the spirit of Spupa Eradication Awareness Month, or whatever, you mm-hmm. know. Do you, do you eradicate them into your cake? Mm. Well, so that's what I'm, I'm so ben, gonna ben, ben, kind ben. of, I'm do gonna you, use ben, the Spupas. Ben, ben, oh, 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 Ben, do you eradicate them? Boo. I don't know if that was worth holding the show Ooh. for. <laughs> I do. In my in my in my Pokemon Safeway with the Spupa eradication yes. awareness month, <laughs> that means a lot to me. Um What was I gonna say? Oh, that's so that's how the um Spupa is involved in this making of this um confetti cake is that you're gonna like collect a bunch of them, maybe, you know, vacuum style with the um plastic bottle. And uh, you're just going to crush it up and use that in, like, a cricket flour type of substitute for your flour in your cakes. Nice. <clears throat> nice. Yes, Ian. What is Funfetti? Like, is it just, like, sugar? Yes. Is it just, like, colored It's sugar? It's just, it's like, sprinkles. like, the little Jimmy sprinkles, right? That, yeah. like, melt and then turn into color? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I hate to make to correct you on this but at least in the northeast uh jimmies are specifically the brown sprinkles what the oh. fuck yeah it's not great oh what when do you I call mean, the other like, ones just sprinkles what There's sprinkles oh. and then there are jimmies Jesus Christ. And when, <laughs> I, when I, I sense to... a little bit of weird racism going on there oh yeah how did they make I... sprinkles racist that's crazy <laughs> When I moved when I moved to Massachusetts, like I was talking to Grace about this the other day because she like remembered this too. There was like a moment where I like sat down and someone said Jimmy's and I was like, "Isn't that racist?" And like, everyone at the you could just see everyone at the table who had grown up never thinking about that suddenly being like, "Oh my oh, god!" No. <laughs> they just became woke in that moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I woke up Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, there you go. All right. Well, that really rustles I, my jimmies. Oh, you have another question? Yes. No, I would like to go next because okay. my recipe is related to yours. Oh. 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 Tell us. How is it related? Well, I was also looking at it and thinking flour. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. P- p- pastry time. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. Baking. Uh-huh. Okay. So, and uh, I'll... I'll introduce this two ways one for uh those of us who are a little squeamish of using the word spupa 
like Ben. Yeah. Especially when you ASMR whisper it into the mic. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm making, um, going to make cream, pr- cream puffs or cream spew puffs. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Spew puff. Do you, when you bite it, does like a giant like jizz stream come out? Is that why you're Ugh. calling it that? That's a, Yes, Jeremy. That is exactly why I'm calling it that. I need... Everyone to know this is just like semen. Yes. Mm. Flying mm. at you. Mm. No, it's not. Yes. <laughs> we can say whatever the hell we want. <laughs> yeah, it's true. After t- <laughs> <laughs> it's almost after 10 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, so. <laughs> your bottle is just crazy. <laughs> you get your spew puh flour, mm-hmm. and I'm going to reckon that. Um, uh, you know, when you get it milled down, you're, it's going to be unbleached. So maybe it'll actually still be the same like color of Spipa's like exoskeleton, kind of like this dark rye, mm. you know, almost um, color. <clears throat> sure. And you make your um, your puff pastry, which uh, in line with Ben, if you if you have to look it up, why do you listen to this show? <laughs> <laughs> We're professionals here. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to pretend like everyone listening to this knows exactly what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> with, okay. with regards to cooking and eating Pokemon? <laughs> yeah. Or just, so, or just general, like they listen to us talk about, I don't know, weird garbage for like an hour and they're like, I know exactly what they're doing. We should, we should get like our own section on Spark Notes where people can like yes. read that before actually listening to the episode yes. and they like, get every reference. Here's how to make a fucking cake or like, yeah. (laughs) You know, people, why don't you get like an audio annotation where you're like listening to a podcast and when you like get to certain points, like on your app, it like tells, it gives you like background information about what they're talking Mm. about. Holy shit. How has Audible not put like X-Ray into podcasts? Anyway. (laughs) X-Ray is the like thing on Prime Video where you stop it. And be like, shut down your fucking Lord of the Rings show. Let's just put annotations on podcasts. This is what the big box is at. All right, anyway. Um, anyway, anyway, all I was going to say is it's going to be like five pages just explaining like why we say like a, a funny word or turn of phrase like mm-hmm. flavor blasted or whatever every week. Yeah. And the annotation is like when Jeremy was five, he put vinegar on his chips. <laughs> yep. <laughs> see, see episode 10 for more. Yes. <laughs> I think it was what you mean to say is that we need like a wiki yeah. for like mm-hmm. all for everything to to all connect mm-hmm. choose a yes mm-hmm. it's yeah all close to the wikipedia <laughs> yeah it is we'll, 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 we'll uh, workshop this i only said wookie shop this that's not right. <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh, so oh, ian yeah. uh, spew puffs cream yeah, so spew puffs make, yeah make make the pastry uh, using the spipa flour, so so when it comes out, it's light, it's you know like fluffy, melt in your mouth, uh, puffy puff pastry, but mm-hmm. nice dark rye color. It's gonna, uh, you know, what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you make your vanilla pastry cream. Again, if you don't know, get off the show. <laughs> go look this up. Okay. Well, so here's another I element like of this. this week we're we... like, we're gonna tell you what I'm gonna make, but I'm not gonna describe it in any detail. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Well, so here's one thing is like we've been recording like 160 fucking episodes of this show. We've done different iterations of this over time where we've explained everything in detail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go Sometimes back to episode You just got to let the the rhythm of the conversation roll. flow, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, but remember every episode is somebody's first and you never True. forget your first. So, I think that <laughs> well, Don't worry, Jeremy. I got you covered in my recipe. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully the listeners Will not forget how to make a fucking puff pastry <laughs> cream puff. So make your make your vanilla pastry cream. You know, get that up, nice whipped, nice and fluffy, super light. This is a super delicious light meal. So you have your bottom, you have your bottom uh, pastry. You that's the, <laughs> the cream getting like squirted onto it, uh-huh. and then you put the top on, and then I too am gonna put some sprinkles around it oh uh oh. so you end up it looks exactly like the pokemon with like its white fur Ooh, is the, is okay the cream. nice you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. nice i so like that it's got cream on the outside as well uh yeah i 
I should have described this better. It's okay. it's not like an enclosed. It's not enclosed. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's like the ones that are like cut in half and they have like. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. What most people would call an ice cream paint job, you know, cream on the inside, <laughs> oh, cream yes. on the outside. Ice cream paint job, ice cream, ice cream paint job. Yeah. Classic All right, song. and Ian, you called yourself Chowder because of the TV show. Did he like make puff pastries a lot? Is that his deal? Uh, you see, Jeremy, there's an episode where one of the characters really wants mm. cream puffs and Chowder tries to make it and hilarity ensues. And I didn't even research famous cream puff. I just Googled just knew. cream puff recipe. And the, the first thing was the recipe I chose. Second thing was like the Chowder wiki breaking down this episode, like defining what a cream puff is. Damn. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I guess if, if the Chowder wiki is going through the trouble of explaining in laborious detail how to make cream puffs, we should probably too, I guess. But I'll let it slide. All right. Uh, Evan, tell us what you got. <laughs> All right. So these lamos over here won't describe what exactly goes into a puff pastry. But let me tell you, we're, we're making this week, we're making a spew puff pastry cheese Danish. Oh. Sounds kind of similar. A right. little bit. A little bit. <laughs> cheese or, you know, cherry or berry. Or, but well, we'll get into it. Okay. Sure. So puff pastry. To, uh, you can also use this for Ian's recipe. Um, one and a quarter cup very cold butter, salted. Oh, shoo, 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 shoo. Oh. <laughs> one half cup very cold water, a quarter cup, uh, te- or no, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and two cups of all purpose spupa flour. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Two spupa, f- two spupa three. flowers. Three, yes, ten. Count them. Count them three. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, basically what, what's going to go into this is some cream cheese, some sugar, some vanilla, some almond extract, some lemon juice. And then I was presupposing, so I know it, it technically like says that they're like, you know, sparkly little, little particles that like attach themselves to this pupa. But what if mm. this bug as it is making its little bug journey, just like, cause you know how it gets a little kind of bristly and like stuff kind of spike it gets a little spiky what if Mm. on its journey like berries stick to it right so like Mm. as you're going around you're like plucking the berries off and that's what's going to go into your danish okay (laughs) so so you're going to take you're going to take all those berries you're going to also add uh, get some egg and some milk for a little egg wash thing going on and you're gonna combine all of those ingredients for your for your danish i'm not going to go over how to make a danish sorry (laughs) you you, uh, I was following, and then you, you you lost me at the mixing part. Could you describe that for me? Um, um sure. Uh, do, you, do you mix your dries with your solids first? How does this go? I will yeah. say that my recipe doesn't include how to make puff pastries. It just tells me the ingredients. <laughs> uh, but basically, you uh, see, so you, you get for the cream cheese filling, right? You mix together some softened cream cheese, some sugar, and uh, just kind of whisk that together. And then you're going to whisk together your your fruits with and add some cornstarch and some sugar and kind of smash them up a little bit together so it kind of gets a little, a little gelatinous, right? Mm. And then you're going to unfold your, your freshly made puff pastry. You're going to slice it in half a little bit. You're going to add and then basically into like rectangular sections. Each one of those rectangular sections is going to become your, your thing. And then you're going to scoop one tablespoon of the, the cream cheese filling, and then you're going to scoop a little bit, uh, like basically another dollop of your fruit filling. And then you're going to kind of do a little bit of a rolly roll around mm. the edges, right, to kind of like seal in the flavor so it doesn't spill out during the baking process. Mm-hmm. So put that in the oven at 400 degrees for about, you know, 25 minutes or something. It gets nice golden brown and puffy. And there's your spew puff pastry danish. Nice. Nice. I just have to say, I think, like, you know, if we had, like, a genre of breakfast food, like the Danish, the scone, uh-huh. the croissant. Don't get me... I, as I'm talking about this, scone just, like... It's hard for me to even say this, because scones are so fucking good. They really good. <laughs> the, like, the big, the big round Danish with the yeah. beautiful fruit fill... That has to be, like, second for me. I'm sorry, the scones win. But, like, really? Danishes are really... <laughs> It's a top tier pastry. It is. Danishes. I, Danishes are great. I don't know. I I do. I guess see why Ian loves a good like dry pastry like a scone. Yeah. But but Danish is probably number one for me. It's it's really up there. A good Danish on a you know like 
Sunday morning. Mm. Mm. I had a scone this morning and it was really good, so I'm not gonna slander scone. I, right you're now. team scone, okay? I I think it's probably a day by day thing. Today was just a scone day. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> Sundays actually, are scone days. Yes. I did. I did actually have um, Trader Joe's muffins, mm. double mm. chocolate muffins for breakfast. Excellent. So, but How it should have been a scone day. <laughs> right. I'm glad to hear that. Any other thoughts on this recipe? I was oh. just gonna say I love a Danish, okay. and I already said that. All right. What's so. what is like the optimal uh, radius or diameter? Of, <laughs> like, when is a Danish too big? When is it just a fruit pizza? Mm. And when is it like just like a cookie with a little bit of jelly in the middle? Got it. What's like, the, like, like good yeah, question. That's a great well, point. I feel like it's got to be at least. Um, Ten to twelve inches in diameter. Whoa, that's shit. a huge Danish. I'm thinking maybe that half that. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking maybe six inches on a good day. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and uh, I have big hands, so like I can I can right. fist an entire twelve inch Danish yes. if I have to. But yeah. Excellent. <laughs> you fist a good six incher on a good day is what you're telling us. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I, I, my favorite flavor of Danish, though, is cheese. Like, mm-hmm. like just raw. Give it yes, to you. It's raw just a cheese. Nice, Blue nice, cheese. Nice, <laughs> sharp slice of Parmesan in the center of my Danish. <laughs> which, I don't know, that could actually be pretty good. if you That could be good. Right. Savory Danish? Yes. Holy um, shit. Yeah. I'm sure someone's done it. No, that's just a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> just mozzarella no it could be no it could be really good with like um like yeah like cheese and then like maybe like a prosciutto or something oh, oh shit wow. it's almost it's like a like an open face breakfast sandwich yeah. oh my yes. god pastry oh. yeah god, boys we've done it again all right so i know i texted you boys about how i'm going to open up that waffle shop cafe but i mm-hmm. might i might pivot to danish or that might yeah, be like danish. a feature yeah this every this every danish has to be like what are we gonna like a uh, Americanish? Yeah. Uh, or, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, oh, got um, it's not Dan- it's no longer Danish. Danish. Yeah, like we're putting a ham and cheese sandwich on a Danish. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we'll workshop that. Listeners, <laughs> let us know what you would call a savory Danish if you like found one in like a store, and or if you have found one, what it's called. All right. So my recipe this week was completely backward uh, done from uh, from the pun I came up in my head. Um, obviously, we're in uh, Gen 6, and that means that we have, we're in France. Uh, 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 and I was like, and I was uh, racking my brain, what do I want to do with Spupa? And can I come up with uh, any funny puns for Spupa? And here's the recipe I got for you. So think France, think Spupa, maybe a funny pun. And this week... We're going to create one of my favorite side dishes, which is spew potatoes au gratin. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> spew um, those potatoes. Exactly. <laughs> but the potatoes are still diglets in our mm. uh, world. But the spupa is uh, coming in as part of kind of basically like you talked about, like flour uh, in your. So it's going to be mm. like the flour and seasonings. In mm. our an our dish, so we're gonna grind mm. it up and use it in that, and then the uh, little uh, shiny bits on it, like the uh, red and black and gold parts, those are like the seasonings that we're gonna use as well as our mm. traditional like salt, pepper, uh, what have you, in there. Potatoes out ground, pretty straightforward. Uh, thin slice your diglets as much as uh, as much as possible. Uh, get some onion. Get some uh, your favorite uh, your seasonings. We're using the spupa for that. Butter, flour, milk cheese cheese of choice and you just basically make a layer of potatoes put all that good stuff on there and then on top of it you just like fucking pile on like a hellish amount of cheese and you bake (laughs) it in the oven and then you broil it a little bit so the cheese gets nice and crispy on top and then you bring that sucker out slam it down let it cool for a little bit and like you've got a perfect you know maybe like thanksgiving side dish uh to roll with so spew potatoes out gratin yes ian davis two questions yeah one, um, is there a distinction between the gratin and like just like scalloped potatoes? Uh, well, uh, I'll let you know. The difference is that uh, al gratin, the potatoes are thinly sliced, whereas scalloped potatoes, they are large cut. Oh. Oh, interesting. Hmm. So we're going for like uh, like potato chip thin slices or? They don't, they don't have to be that thin, but you want them like no lo- no wi- wider than like a quarter of an inch. You want them okay. like pretty thin. Hmm. My second question is, why is this a side dish? Because I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the store and bought like 
the the boxed version or the microwavable version, yeah. and I just pounded that fucker. Go to town. Yes. I would too. Oh. I I mean, it is. And it, it, the thing is, it's pretty intensely one thing, um, which like is potatoes and cheese. And cheese. Um, pretty 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 much all starches <laughs> are usually side dishes. Yes. Um, so it might be a little much for an entire meal. Ooh. Also, it's September. I live in New Mexico. Let me say this. Let's throw some green chili in there. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Someone, okay. I have not yet received a package of green chili. Oh, were we supposed Where to do, do you that? Live? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone better get on that. But yeah. Jokes, as, jokes aside, Evan, I actually um, did send you a care package, but then I, I saw in my, the tracking app it said, uh, could not be delivered couch in the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Like the UPS Fuck. guy opens the door and there's just a giant couch and he's like, well, oh. don't worry about this. They don't pay me like, enough for this fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> he like, just slams the door shut and doesn't like, and like burns down the building. And he's like, don't have to think about this anymore. No AC in my truck, couch in the way. Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there you go. That's my recipe. I threw a little bit of a Hail Mary in there to like, you know, get some sympathy votes, but... I think yeah, that's I mean, good. Hey, green chili, yeah, will get me every time. Oh, yeah, it will. I was someone on Twitter who is like lives in California is just like, I love green chili, and I was like, Yeah, you, you don't do. even know. Yeah, you, well, they don't they li- they don't live here, but they that they know about it, and they like and like they like specified, and they did like the picture of like the people roasting it. I, they I spelled think, it right. Yeah, uh, I don't <laughs> think the people who don't live in New Mexico realize how like late summer, early fall, it's like there's just people out in front of like grocery stores roasting chili and it's like the greatest smelling thing in the world and you're like hell yeah i love i love being a turtle if you exactly if you're listening to this and you don't corn. you haven't been to new mexico please uh look at your phone right now at the annotated uh bib <laughs> and you'll see the section on new mexican green chili because if you think we're talking about like ground beef and oh. beans oh Get no the that's fuck out of here that's texas go fuck off to texas and if you're spelling it with an i i don't know what to tell you but <laughs> there's no i well there is one i yes there's <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> yes it's chili like the country but that's uh that's specifically the uh pepper here in new mexico um but let us review our recipes this week from ben we have uh, spaghetti, which is <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> spaghetti. That's what you said. Which is funfetti cake made out of spupa. From Ian Davis, we have uh, spupa puff pastry. I said that correctly. From Evan Pretty Aubrey, nice. we have uh, spupa Danish. From me, we have spew potatoes au gratin. And Ben, I'm gonna finish voting. Can you tell us? Who spaghetti the is? would have been pretty good. <laughs> spaghetti. Oh God, don't make me spew. Yeah. Um. Well, I have the results, and Evan won. Hey, Whoa. I don't get a couch, but I get a win. Yes, you do get a win. <laughs> well, I mean, you do have a couch. It's just stuck in your house. Yeah. <laughs> would not come um, with a mouse. Yes. Ev- Evan got two votes. Uh, Ian got a vote, and Jeremy got a vote. Sorry. Funnily enough, spew petty did not get a single vote. <laughs> oh, and that, do you think saying spew petty like cost you? <laughs> Probably, it cost me the election for yes. sure. What a spew pity! <laughs> oh, <laughs> there it is. No, just keep thinking. Uh, you said spew petty, and it just makes me think of like Tom Petty throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like when uh, What's His Nuts dumped all that poop on those guys in the Chicago River. Um, oh, Dave Matthews? Yes. <laughs> oh, <no>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, By accident. Yes. The record will show. Purely <laughs> accidental. Um, anyway, um, now let's move on to everyone's favorite section of the show. It's called Whale Lord's Mail Horde. It's where we read your email sent into iChoosePod at gmail.com. Evan, can you read this email sent in by Mike? Uh, Mike, I, I'm I'm the Mike guy apparently. So, yes. <laughs> uh, hello, icy guys. Spupa, a fuzzy bug. Okay, okay. Let's read the Pokedex. Bingo. Well, we're going to grill the shit out of this bug. Presupposition: colon. Spupa is a cocoon, so that's an exoskeleton filled with meat and bug goo. So I present blackened Spupa tenderloin medallions. Tenderloin mm. in parentheses. Yes. Firstly, preheat your grill to have a real hot side. Uh, and an indirect heat side. 
In a big ass mason jar, prepare uh, brine using hot water, salt, and sugar. Place your whole spupa inside. Mm -hmm. Then prepare a dry rub mix using paprika, garlic, onion, cayenne, salt, and pepper. Take the spupa out of the brine, apply the dry rub over the whole hog. uh, Slap that bad boy on the hot side of the grill for a few minutes until it starts developing a real heavy, charred, almost burned appearance, and then put on the indirect side uh, heat of the grill for a few more minutes until fully cooked. Spupa's abilities uh, abilities include shed skin, so once the meat comes off the grill, it immediately sheds the heavily charred outer skin to expose the perfectly cooked bug meat resembling like a that. tenderloin that you then slice into medallions and serve with your favorite style of diglet on the side. Hope you're doing well, Mike. Maybe it could go with your potatoes that Jeremy made. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Excellent. Wish... Good side dish. Why isn't the why have we lost lost medallion as like a mm, uh... a form of currency? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the currency of the Caribbean medallion. Exactly. Why don't like why don't I have like a, nic- a nickel medallion. But you could just yeah. call your chains that. You're like, would you like a quarter medallion? I need, I need to slice my hand open and rub my blood all over a quarter so that I will like you know, live forever or something. Uh, I, think, I think medallion is more reference to an item that you wear, I think. Mm. Uh, like a coin. Yes. Yeah. That That's right. Yeah. I, I'm As not... in the movie The Gold Medallion yes. uh, starring Jackie Chan. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Or or the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, but it's it's definitely it's definitely something I think that's the situation. But don't correct me on that. That sounds I right. Done, I in every in every situation where I've, run, where I've run into a medallion, it's usually a, a coin around your neck. Yeah, or it's mm. like you know someone's like disco <clears throat> wear and they have like a gold medallion and it's mm. like on their yep. like exposed mm. chest, you know, kind of situation. So uh, the oh, medallion uh, describes more of like a personal value than a commodity value, oh, wow. is what you're oh, saying. It really oh. makes you think when you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real, uh, the medallion's worth the friends we made along the way. Anyway, uh, I'm going to read, this is not a recipe, but it's a fun little thing uh, written by uh, Pokemaniac Chris in the Discord. Uh, and he says, uh, spupa, like a pupa that makes you vomit uncontrollably for up to 17 hours. It's the middle stage between barf bug and vomilian. And I just thought barf mm. bug and vomilian was pretty good. So nice. there you go. God, um, if if Pokemon was more like garbage pail kids, they would definitely <laughs> do this. <laughs> well, look if uh, if Game Freak's listening, they've got a uh, barf bug available as an option <laughs> going forward. Oh, God, I could, I could see like um, in line with like the Harry Potter flavored uh, jelly beans. Oh. Mm-hmm. Vomilian, the vomit one is yeah. Yeah, that's that's not far. I guess. Yeah. So Jelly Belly, get on, on it. <laughs> yeah, jump on our laps. Let's, let's, <laughs> ride, let's ride the money train. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now is the time of the show where we pick next week's Pokemon. It's a section I like to call Pick'Em'On. Evan, can you randomly generate a number between 750 and 721? 650, excuse me. Oh, you messed me up here. Yeah. 650, 721. I yes. should know this by now, but I don't. Yeah. Next week's Pokemon is six ninety nine. Ooh, not quite nice. seven dollars. Sixty nine. Nice. All right. Next week's Pokemon is called Aurorus, and it's like a giant ice dinosaur. Hell yeah! Um, hmm. This so. this is going to be the oh. third nicest episode. Yes. Mmm. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Ben, do you have a question? No, I think I just remember what Pokemon this is. It's like um. It has like a like Aurora Borealis kind of like color scheme yes, to it. Yes, it does. I'm sending yeah. you guys a picture right now. Um, yeah. Hell yeah. I think oh, I know this guy. Cute. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Dinosaur. Yeah, it's ice and rock type. Our favorite type, rock type. Oh, Jesus. More rocks. <laughs> That's what Jesus said when they rolled the boulder in front of him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, more rocks. <laughs> Welcome to the show where we cook and eat rocks. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, it's a classic part of uh, what I would like to call. Uh, nope, nope, nope. I forgot. It. Almost, almost did the outro, but we do plugs next. Uh, plug your shit. I thought you were gonna like restart the show again. Yeah. You're like, welcome to the I choose you. The third one. <laughs> uh, plugs, Ben. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Ben C Montoya. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Just you can follow me there. I'm not doing a whole lot, and but it's fun. We can talk. <laughs> we yeah. call the segment uh, Plug Trio. Oh shit! Oh, well, that's good. Uh, Thank you. Uh, if you if you liked that, 
you should follow me at musician davis on instagram and you should also check out uh my band zoltan and the fortune tellers just released a new ep a few months ago it's on spotify it's on itunes it's also on youtube search zoltan and the fortune tellers after Hell yeah. dark excellent evan uh, you can buy my couch that is currently in my hallway. Uh, feel free to DM me. Um, it'll be here until you pick it up. Uh, that's all I got. Live in a couch now. All right. You can follow me on Twitter at Velocity Prime One. I guess you could also follow me on Tumblr because that's the two social media. And uh, you know, what? I also have a letterbox page if you want to follow me oh, there. So. Oh, look at what movies Jeremy watched this uh, week. You can, you can see him right. watch The Barbarian. Yeah. Or I, Barbarian, yeah. I guess. Check Did that movie out. just absolutely shit themselves? I, 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 I watched the trailer and was scared. I, that movie was so fucking good. <laughs> I'll just say this. There's a big jump scare about a third of the way through the movie, and the guy next to me threw his popcorn around when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty That was pretty fun. Anyway, uh, also check out the-avocado.org, Jeremy Zielik, for all my writings about film, television, uh, video games, that kind of stuff. The-avocado.org, Jeremy Zielik. Uh, all right. Uh, let's, let me tell you about I Choose You. I Choose You can be found on your favorite podcast apps, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or your podcast catcher of choice. If you like our show, give us a five-star review on your favorite thing, but especially Apple Podcasts and Spotify, because that's where it counts the most. favorite yeah. thing. Yes. I would say mostly there, yes. actually. Your favorite thing might not count. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, do, but we'll do it on your favorite thing, and then do it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify <laughs> to help us go up the ranks. Anyway. Um, if you want more I Choose You goodness, may I suggest checking out our social media pages, I Choose Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Hang out with fellow choosies and send in recipes wherever you want. If you want to be a part of the I Choose You community, may I suggest I Choose Pod on Discord. Links are available in each episode description and on our social media pages. You can hang out, talk about garbage uh, and send in recipes there as well. It's a lot of fun. We do game There's nights. been a lot of memes. Yes, uh, it's oh. been... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's margarita. Class. Anyway, um, check it out. It's great. Um, lastly but not leastly, don't forget to head over to I uh, the official I Choose You website, ichooseyou.menu. ichooseyou.menu has a full episode archive and a merch store where you can buy such things as pins, stickers, and aprons, all designed by one Evan Aubrey. All that whoop, whoop. and more on ichooseyou.menu. And this has been I Choose You. I've been your host and also Brian of the group, Jeremy Zielik. I've been your friend on this show, Ben Montoya. I've been Ian Davis, the chowder of the show. <laughs> and your couchless friend, Evan Aubrey. And to um. all... The choosies out there in Radio Land. In a while, toe to dial. Yeah, I choose you. Yeah, I choose you. Everybody wants to be a master. Chef. Everybody wants to show their skill. In the kitchen, everybody wants to cook that clauncher. Finny in at the top of the grill. Each time you fry, gonna cook it just a little bit better. Each taste, you try, boy, this froakie is nice and tender. It's a whole new world we cook in. It's a whole new place to eat. We're in season six with some brand new recipes. Cause we're still gonna cook them all and make a pun or two or three. Make a pun or two or three.